Welcome to this video from In 28 Minutes. Thanks for helping us provide awesome learning experiences to more than 300,000 learners across multiple platforms, Udemy, Safari and Pact. Let's welcome our lead instructor, Ranga Rao Karanam. In this video, we will be talking about the Spring Cloud Framework. What is Spring Cloud Framework? What does it enable and where can you use it? Spring Cloud provides tools for developers to quickly build some of the common patterns in distributed systems. Let's just go to the Spring Cloud project page. So you can see the definition in here. Spring Cloud provides tools for developers to quickly build some of the common patterns, configuration management, service discovery, circuit breakers, routing, proxy, and a lot of other stuff. Now, what does this really mean? And how can you really use Spring Cloud? Let's look at that right now. So the first thing you need to understand is what is cloud and what are the problems in cloud? As you are aware, we are switching towards a lot of microservices architectures. In microservices architectures, we develop small microservices. The important thing for each of these microservices is I would want to be able to deploy them in the cloud. Why? Cloud is very important because infrastructure for applications is very, very costly. And the load on applications is not constant throughout the year. So let's say Amazon at peak load, let's say at Thanksgiving day during the holiday season, it might have 10 to 20 times more load than at the low load periods. If Amazon buys all the infrastructure and keeps it ready, it needs to keep the infrastructure ready for the peak periods. What would that infrastructure be doing when there is no load? It would be doing nothing. So that's wasted investment. Instead of that, applications today make use of the cloud. If I'm getting 100 users, I'll have minimum infrastructure. If I'm getting 1000 users, I would get a little bit more infrastructure from the cloud. If I'm getting million users, then I would get more infrastructure from the clouds. So this is what cloud enables, dynamic scaling. You can get resources on demand and use them and then give them back. But the problem is your applications should be built for the cloud. It's not like you can take any application and put it in the cloud. That's not how it, things work. You need to have a design in place where you are building your applications, you are architecting your applications so that they can deploy they can be deployed in the cloud. Now, what are the important things for being able to deploy things in the cloud? That's what Spring Cloud Framework enables. A typical microservice would need a lot of infrastructure to support a wide variety of things that all microservices need. One of the important things is when we talk about microservices, the loads on these microservices might be different. There might be four instances of microservice 2, two instances of microservice 1, and just one instance of microservice 3. So as new instances of microservice 2 come in, the load, the calls from microservice 1 should be distributed between all of them. So you should, it should be possible to auto scale up and auto scale down. That's one of the important features. The other important challenge with respect to microservices architectures is configuration management. Instead of having one application, you have 25 microservices. So you need to maintain the configuration for each of these microservices in each of the environments. So if I have 100 microservices and four environments, we are talking about 100 into four, 400 different configurations to manage. As we talked about it earlier, we need to have features of dynamic scale up and scale down. The other important thing is visibility into the microservices. You want to know what's happening behind the screens. It's not just if there's a problem, let's say microservice five is throwing an error. You'd want to find out why it's happening. You'd want to ha find out when a request comes in, what all microservices it's growing through, which microservice is throwing the error. You need to have great visibility into what's happening in the background. And when a microservice goes down, you need to know it immediately. So you need to have monitoring around it. Spring Cloud provides all those solutions. Spring Cloud provides a solution called Spring Cloud Config Server, which provides centralized configuration management. You can put all the configuration for all microservices for all environments in this, and it provides great security and great integration with 
Spring Boot based applications. Spring Boot Cloud provides dynamic scale up and down features through naming server, that's Eureka. You can also use Ribbon, which is a client side load balancing framework. And you can also use Fain to write easier REST clients. When you combine Spring Cloud with containerization using Docker and container management using Docker Swarm or Kubernetes, you would have the complete dynamic scale up and scale down features. You can implement visibility and monitoring using Zipkin distributed tracing, which enables you to see, okay, this request went through microservice A, B, C, and F. And also you can have Netflix API gateway to implement common features for all the microservices. For example, rate limiting. You can use things like Netflix API gateway to implement common features for these microservices. Probably security, auditing, and rate limiting and things like that. The other important feature that you can use from Spring Cloud is fault tolerance. When a service is down, you can give some default response and that's enabled by using a framework called Hystrix. The best way to start using Spring Cloud is just go to start.spring.io and you can use any dependency that you would want. So Eureka is one of the dependencies that we talked about. You can add a gateway as well. One of the important challenges with Spring Cloud is it's still a evolving set of projects. I think there is a long way to go before Spring Cloud becomes really stable. One of the best courses for microservices and Spring Cloud is what we have on Udemy. It's called Master Microservices with Spring Boot and Spring Cloud. It has amazing ratings and it's about a 11 hour course talking about RESTful services, microservices and a wide variety of other stuff. In 28 minutes is providing awesome learning experiences to 300,000 learners across platforms like Udemy, Safari Online and Pact. We have clogged million hours of learning in the last few months. The question is, what do you want to learn next? We are building solutions to help programmers at all levels. You can learn programming with our awesome courses on Java, Python and JavaScript. You can learn full stack development with REST APIs and microservices with a wide range of frameworks like Spring Boot, Node.js, React, Angular, and Spring Cloud. We have 200 plus videos to help you start your journey from a programmer to a software architect. We have videos to help you learn frameworks, industry trends, including things like microservices, learn the best practices in architecture, design, and code quality. Thanks for watching. Keep learning in 28 minutes.